<clears throat> well, thanks everybody for joining us. My name is uh, Scott Jansen. I am the uh, material handling product manager for Rhino Toolhouse. Uh, today, I'm really excited to bring you uh, Conductix Wampler. Uh, Conductix is a, a, a company that you might be familiar with, conductor bar, maybe Festoon systems, um, uh, radio controls or uh, pendant uh, push button controls, uh, or even cable reels. Uh, they're very popular in the industry for that. Uh, today, though, we wanted to, to spotlight uh, three other new products from them. Uh, one is their, their Nexus BB, one is the optical positioning system, and the J-Radios. Three brand new products, uh, really great products will really help you in your, uh, whether it be crane controls or even if you can find other applications for them, I'm sure. Um, a couple uh, a couple of things that we need to uh, uh, mention here before we start. Uh, if you have questions, please uh, put those questions in the chat. Uh, those will be answered at the end of the uh, demo session here. Uh, so write them in the chat, and at the end of it, uh, Steve or myself will read those for uh, the general uh, Brian over at Conductix to answer. And then uh, lastly, uh, stay on the whole time so we can uh, we can give away this uh, this fantastic uh, Rhino Toolhouse uh, Arctic cooler. And we also have some uh, some Arctic or actually yeah, they're Arctic uh, um, tumbler mugs. So. Again, with that, thank you for joining us. Um, we are going to send it over to Omaha, Nebraska, where Brian is uh, ready and waiting to uh, show you all about these brand new, uh, really exciting products. Thank you. Perfect. Uh, thank you for the introduction here. Let me get my PowerPoint pulled up for you. All right. So as, as we kind of talk about Conductix, we have a wide variety of products. Um, and I'll be going through it. My name is Brian Cook. I'm a senior product manager out of our facility in Omaha, Nebraska. And today we'll be talking about three specific products, but I always like to just kind of touch on it, uh, saying, as, as was mentioned, we do a lot of things with, with anything that moves and needs data and power. We have a lot of different solutions. You can see our wide portfolio that we have. Uh, today, what we're actually going to be talking about first is going to be Nexus BB. Uh, it's a really exciting new data communication solution that we have. Uh, and the great thing about it is it works across a lot of different physical conductors. So that could be a conductor bar, a festoon, a reel, slip rings, or even cable chain solutions. You know, when we were doing the research, when we develop a new product, we like to go out and interview our customers and find out what problems they're having. And when we went out, what we found out is that everyone's starting to look at data communication and I always say the first, second, and third most important thing for, for our customers, for, for you guys, is reliability, 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 right? It's just got to work. Uh, and then after that, it's got to be secure if we're handling data. And it's got to be something that can install quickly to minimize that downtime. And with Nexus BB, as we're talking about um, these data communication, the specific protocols we're looking at are going to be anything that's Ethernet-based, right? So this could be a video. This could be UDP, TCP I packets, PROFINET, Ethernet IP, really any of those uh, standard Ethernet communication protocols. And you know, as we start looking about it, a big thing that we try to understand is what are the applications where this is actually needed? Um, automated storage and retrieval systems where people could be using uh, automated PLC controls to send it to the PIC location. Uh, we're starting to see a lot more rail-mounted industrial robots, right? So as that that's, that six-axis robot is traveling along a rail, being able to step away from cable chain and maybe just get a conductor bar system with three conductors, we're able to send that control information through it. Um, also, overhead crane. You know, as you start handling these very large loads, sometimes you need an additional camera angle to kind of make sure that everything's clear and that you're able to safely lift or set something down. And then transfer cars, again, automation protocols, you know, Ethernet IP or PROFINET, and then video. We're starting to see that trend pick up in a lot of applications where video is becoming more popular. So, great. Now we understand what it is, but how does this solution actually work? So, what we do is we have the AC power signal, which you'll see in the upper left-hand corner. Now, our system works with DC voltages also, but we just pick one to, to show and step through this, uh, how it works, right? Then we have the ethernet signal on that lower left-hand side. And both those signals come into that Nexus BB modem, right? We take that ethernet signal, we modulate that onto the power using power as a carrier frequency, not unlike a FM radio, right? So you tune into the radio station, but the actual music is traveling along there. 
then you send it over that physical conductor to uh, uh, could be to the to the other end, and we have the modem there. And that modem takes to converts that data over power signal into an Ethernet signal again. So whatever that original Ethernet packet was, we're able to convert that back. And then we use the filter to clean up that 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 signal, that data over power signal, so that we have clean power going out to the equipment. And what this looks like on an application. Now, in this example, we're showing a conductor bar application, but this could be on a reel. Uh, you just replace the image of that conductor bar with a reel or a festoon or whatever piece of equipment you have, right? So we have the incoming power or your main power coming in. We run those into the filter. Now you'll notice that it's a little different orientation here. We have the line side facing in towards Nexus BB and the load side facing out towards the main power. And the reason for that is that with the system, since we're using power as a carrier frequency, we want to make sure that we clean that up before we use that as the carrier. And then you have an Ethernet connection. That could be your Ethernet network. Uh, if you're tied into the rest of your network, it could be an HMI. It just really depends on, on what you have for your equipment. So we take that incoming power, we take that Ethernet signal, and then in this case, we're injecting it into a conductor bar application, but it could be a, a reel or a festoon or anything else. And that travels along the length of that conductor. And in this case, on that the mobile end, we bring that down to that mobile control panel. We run one leg of that power into the Nexus BB, and then we convert that, that data over power signal back into Ethernet, and you can wire it into your PLC or some sensors, whatever you have on that end. And then we run it through the, the filters, again, the line side facing in towards the Nexus BB and the load side out, and that gives you that clean power signal for your mobile equipment. And so when we look at this, you'll notice we have the orange lines. Those are gonna be just your traditional clean power. We have the dotted lines, which are gonna be the, the physical ethernet cable connection. And then our blue lines are gonna be that data over power solution. Now we also have boxes uh, that have the blue box around them. And those are gonna be all the components that are provided as part of a Nexus BB system. So we have the modem, the filter, and then if you have a conductor bar, we have the, the terminating resistors, but those are only really needed on a conductor bar application. So one of the great things about Nexus BB is the plug and play installation, right? So it's a very simple connection. So it's a two wire or a three wire setup. So if you run a DC voltage, you know, a 24 volt system, you only need two wires. If you have a single phase AC, we can get that single in, single out setup. And then if you run a three phase power, we can take L1, two, and three and create a MIMO or multiple in, multiple out. So you wire in that power, you plug in that ethernet cable and you created a virtual ethernet cable, right? So there's no networking experience or software. And the great thing about it is it's retrofitable, right? You can install one modem on the feed in and then one on the vehicle side and you're done, right? There's no downtime. You don't have to go through and, and retrofit that entire system. And with this, it's really meant to be a simple and secure solution, right? So when you go to take this out and deploy it at the actual application, no arguing with IT over which Wi-Fi channels are open. Uh, it's really about a secure signal because we're not broadcasting it. We use industry standard 128-bit AES encryption, and it gives you that reliable hardwired solution. It's a flexible product, and we mean that in that it can be mounted indoor or outdoor as long as it's mounted in an outdoor rated enclosure. And as we talked about earlier, it's a virtual ethernet cable and it works across all these different product, uh, product lines, a conductor bar, a reel, a festoon, and it can work across multiple systems simultaneously as long as you don't transform the voltage. So if you think about a crane, we can have the signal going through a conductor bar down the runway, and then through a festoon on the bridge and then down a reel for a below the hook device, all with one modem if we don't transform the voltage. So it really simplifies things. And uh, when we start getting into the technical specifications, as I mentioned, we can run either a MIMO setup, which is 350 megabit per second if you have a three phase system, or you can do 175 megabit per second in a single phase system. So either a DC or a single phase AC. We've also grown the capabilities. We can do one master up to seven clients on a conductor bar system or in any uh, regular layout. And as we start talking about this, latency is the next thing that comes up. And I always like to frame that up by discussing what latency is, right? So we mentioned that human reaction time is around 250 milliseconds. And I have a link in this PowerPoint to a, a website you can go and you click when it changes from red to green to see what does that 250 milliseconds really look like? Because I think that really frames up what that response time really means in real life, right? So 
When we uh, deploy Nexus BB, we recommend that the PLC refresh rate is set to 64 milliseconds. And this is so that it complies with Profi safe communication uh, applications where you have to have communication with 192 milliseconds. So we have 64 milliseconds with three retries. Now that 64 milliseconds doesn't mean it takes us 64 milliseconds to send every communication. We just recommend that's how often we look. Our average network latency is in the three to five millisecond range. Now, when we get ready to look at the conductor, well, we start figuring out what physical conductor you have because that can vary quite a bit. Some larger conductors like our 813 conductor rail, we have 420 meter limit, but some of our other conductors like 815, which is rated for 100 amps, we can do 1,050 meters on, a, uh, on that system. And we have the temperature range of negative 20 to 60. Um, and then that's for the, the CUL, US, and CE listing. We've also done testing from negative 40 to 70. So we've expanded that range with some of our testing. As I mentioned, we have the CUL, US, and CE listing. And we have a couple different voltage ranges. So we can work 120 to 600 VAC. And in DC voltages, we can do 24 to 48 or 150 to uh, 300 volt DC. So if you have something in between there, just reach out to Rhino Toolhouse and we can get that answer for you. All right, so as we start talking about data communication, the next thing that we really start talking about is, hey, I'm, I'm communicating with these pieces of equipment, but where is this equipment inside my facility? And that's where optical positioning comes in. It's an absolute positioning system that we offer. So again, when we were doing the market research, what we found is, hey, when I'm going to deploy something like this, I need it to be easy to quote and to install. I need to have an absolute position system, which we'll discuss next. And I don't want to add any additional wear components, right? I want something that just works all the time. Now we have uh, our sensors can support a couple different industrial protocols. So we have Profinet, Ethernet IP, or ProfiSafe communication protocols. So what is oh, an absolute Brian. Brian, just quick, so Brian. quickly, uh, uh, we have a question. Somebody had their hand up, IT. Yeah, um, yeah, go ahead. yeah go ahead. Do you have a question that we can ask? Yeah, you could unmute yourself and ask. OK. All right, maybe they accidentally did that, so. All right. OK, no problem. We'll keep, we'll going. keep going. Um, so for an optical positioning system, what is it, right? Positioning is a system outputs a location. And when we're talking about this, we're talking about the location relative to a starting point on a fixed rail. And there's a couple different technologies that you can use when it comes to positioning systems. The first one is going to be relative positioning, uh, which is similar to an incremental encoder. And what that does is it counts how far it is away from that known location. Now, these are, are pretty widely deployed. Uh, deployed, but the one thing you run into is if you have a loss of power on the equipment, once that equipment turns back on or regains power, it doesn't know where it is. It just starts counting at one again. So if you're at 30 feet and it turns off and turns back on, it thinks it's at zero. All of our systems are going to be based on absolute positioning, which means that it reads the actual location of where it's located. So this means if I'm at 30.12 30 feet, power goes out, it comes back up, I know I'm at 30.12 feet as soon as I power on. So that's really the difference between those. And the, the applications where this really, you know, we will see a lot of interest in this is, you know, a crane obstruction avoidance. You know, as uh, facilities start getting crowded, you have to start building offices or you add some additional infrastructure to that building and you have a section of a runway where maybe you don't want to be able to travel that crane. Well, you can use the optical positioning to define where those positions are so that you prevent that movement. Also, automated material handling. I have coil stacking here, but this applies to a lot of different equipment where you're starting to see overhead cranes move into more like a Cartesian robot, right? Where you're picking up and you're placing things uh, along a, a wide uh, area. And this allows you to get a very well-defined location for those. Uh, it can also be used in uh, equipment spacing. So if you have a bunch of different cranes or a bunch of different seven or six axis robots on one rail, you could allow this to kind of program those distance in between there. Again, as I talked about, we really wanted to make sure this was quick and easy to install. So we use a simple extruded aluminum profile with some quick finger splices. 
and we utilize existing SafeHook 2 hangers, so that's one of our conductor bar profiles, and this allows it to be mounted to the web bracket, so it works with a lot of different conductor bar systems, and we include that adjustable sensor mount bracket, so depending on what the mounting distance is of the toe arm, we can work with a lot of different conductor bar solutions. When we designed this, we wanted to make sure we stayed within that conductor bar envelope to keep this as small and compact as possible. So you can see in this example here, we have that positioning rail mounted on the top of the web bracket of a uh, conductor bar system, so it keeps it really uh, compact. So it's also a non-contact solution, right? We don't want to have any wearing parts, and it's absolute position, so should your equipment lose power, you power it back up and you're able to be running right away. Now, the sensors that we use, we use either SICK or Pepperell and Fuchs sensors. So you can see that these are rated for indoor or limited outdoor. And that just means uh, no direct UV exposure to the lens because you can blind out the sensor. Um, and then the position resolution, traveling speed, and max system length, those are, are pretty similar among them. Really where we start differentiating these two is when we get down to the protocols. So both of them support Ethernet IP or Profinet. But the Pepperell and Fuchs sensors that we offer also have a Profi-Safe rated solution, which is the only SIL-3 rated PLE solution that I'm aware of on the market for an absolute position solution, for fixed rail at least. And the other thing is different in the code tape. So one uses a barcode and one uses a QR code. So that's really the only difference. The great thing about both of them is they also we able, are able to offer a printable splice code. So since it's absolute positioning, every code is unique along that entire length of the system. And by having that, if you have a damage occur to that, you can print out a splice code, tape it up there until you're able to get the replacement code tape. Now we've talked about data, we've talked about where the equipment is along that fixed rail. And the next thing that really comes in, well, how do, how do we control these vehicles, right? And that's where our J radio line comes in. So again, doing the research, we said, hey, what, what do we need to make sure this is gonna make this as efficient and effective as possible, right? Safety rated solution, you have a bunch of large moving equipment, we wanna make sure it's safe. Also that bi-directional communication. So we have that link between these and that allows a lot of capabilities for us, which we'll discuss. And the great thing about these is these are engineered to application, right? So when we, when we do this uh, with Rhino Toolhouse, we'll reach out, we'll figure out, you know, what, what information, what do you need? What problems do you have? And that way we can give you the solution that fits your solution perfectly. And when we talk about controls, these work with a lot of different systems. So it can be relay-based controls, digital and analog input or outputs. And again, supporting those industrial automation protocols like Profinet, Ethernet IP, Modbus, along with several others. And also we offer one or two step switches depending on what's needed. All right, and then when it comes to applications for the J radio, uh, one of the big thing that comes up is tandem lift loads, right? So with that, you have this, you have two, two vehicles that are carrying a load and that load can vary in length depending on what day it is, right? And so a lot of the solutions out there on the market, you can control them individually, but what happens if you have a collision avoidance system that you're trying to prevent one crane from driving into the next one? The great thing about it is this J radio line actually allows that signal to be linked. So you have the controls linked and you have that, that collision avoidance system that can be linked among all those receivers. Also magnet or vacuum control. So we are able to configure that how you need, such as a two button release, right? You wanna make sure you engage, but you wanna prevent accidental disengagements of a magnet or a vacuum because you're gonna be carrying a heavy load. And when it comes to ATEX, right? So we have explosion rated applications or dusty environments. We wanna make sure that we give you that right solution for what you need. So how does this work, right? So the big thing is that bi-directional communication between the transmitter and the receiver. And that allows us to have a lot of different solutions. One is it helps enable us to have that SIL-3 PLE rated communication link. And it allows us to give customized feedback to the operator. Additional features that we can offer are IR functions. So we have a little IR sensor, and that allows you to do an association, which is where you could bring a replacement transmitter and pair it with that receiver from the ground, no extra tools uh, needed. And then sometimes we also have applications where maybe you only want to be able to start up that crane in a certain location or that vehicle, it doesn't have to be a crane, or you wanna only control that robot when you're standing right next to it. 
Well, you can use that infrared function so that you have to be pointed right at that piece of equipment. So if that's something that desired, we can add that functionality to this. Now, a bunch of different uh, transmitter and receiver options. The receivers really come down to what you're communicating with. The transmitters is really where the operator is interacting with it. And we want to make sure we kind of go through those, right? So the first, the simplest is going to be our beta solution, very ergonomic solution with four to eight buttons and uh, a very simple screen or a very simple solution with a screen. The next we can step up to our gamma. So this is going to be a ruggedized uh, transmitter and it's got a really unique nowhere button. So we actually use some optical sensor to read. That way you don't have to worry about ever wearing out those button components. Then we start stepping into our belly box lines for those more advanced controls. The first thing we would step into is a Pika. So it's a very compact and versatile uh, belly box solution. And if you start to run into where you have a lot of different needs for controls, that's when we'd step into that Mocha box. Again, these are all engineered solutions. So when, you're, when, when you reach out, we're gonna start trying to figure out what problems are you solving? Do you need a tandem operation where you can take one transmitter and switch between controlling A, B, or both the vehicles? We also have pitch and catch uh, control functionality, which would mean if you have a vehicle along a, a long distance and you want one operator to handle it, and then as he transitions it to the next one, you don't have to pass off that transmitter. You can pitch the control of that vehicle or that robot to the next operator. You know, and then the further, if you start looking at very advanced applications, we have what we call a pick and control option. So you have an operator and he can control five different pieces of equipment depending on what process he's doing. With that pick and control functionality, he can bring his transmitter, he can go pair with that vehicle or that, that piece of equipment, control it, disconnect and go on to that next one. And then with this allows us to get some travel limits. So if you want to control how far a piece of equipment is, is being sent, we can bring those inputs back into the radio. Um, then it gets into feedback, right? So that bi-directional control allows us to get some feedback to the operator in that hand. So that could be load cell information. It could be feedback on the drive, or maybe you have some diagnostics information that you need. Also, what are a really unique feature of the J radio line is that it has a visual channel scan. So on the transmitter, you can get it into channel scan mode and you can actually see which of those channels that you want to utilize are going to be the cleanest for your application or for, for that specific site. So with the product specs here, we have a couple different frequency ranges. We offer both a 900 megahertz and a 2.4 gigahertz frequency. And range, those can be controlled with a transmit power. So we have the capability there to, to adjust that, but it goes up to one kilometer, which is more than enough for, for most applications. And we offer this with a rechargeable lithium ion battery. Again, these have that LCD display with an IP65 rating. And again, a SIL3 PLE. So if you want to have that safe solution, this is going to be a great radio for you. And then your ATEX solution. So you're working in those dusty, dirty environments. We can find, we can design a solution that's going to meet your application needs. All right. And with that, I'm going to put the PowerPoint down. I'm going to close that and I'm going to go to spotlighting the video. Oh, we have one question here. Go ahead. We do. Uh, that, do the controller. Me? Yeah, do these yeah, controller ahead, boxes work with any and all crane models or certain manufacturers? Like, what have you tested this with? Yeah, the, the crane control, the, the J radio line, it'll work with all those. So what we do is when, when you reach out to us, we'll, fi we'll figure out what kind, of, uh, or what kind of vehicle you need. Is it an Ethernet communication for PLC? Is it a simple relay contactor solution? So we have a lot of different receivers and transmitters. Once we figure out what you need, we can help pair the right equipment to that. So it'll work with all of them. Just got to find the right hardware. Okay. I, I was asking more like Harrington or Works or, you know. Yep. Okay. Most of those standard uh, overhead cranes are going to be a contactor-based solution. And by default, all of them have, a, the, the receivers have a certain number of, of relays in there. So we interact with all those without any problem. It's just wiring it up to the correct output. But that's a good question. Any other questions? Otherwise, I have a, a demo I can show too uh, behind me. 
We'll close out our PowerPoint so the video shows full screen for everyone. One second as we get that. Yep, you're good to go. Okay, full screen now? Yep. Perfect. All right. So, uh, you know, talking about this is great, but as we start getting into it, we, we want to make it real, right? How does this actually work? Uh, so we have this test set up here that we developed to kind of demonstrate how this technology works. Um, and what we have set up here, this is an 831 conductor bar system. And we just have this wired into our 120 VAC power here. So it's wired into the, the 120 VAC power. And then we have our two vehicles on here, right? And each of these vehicles is being powered from this conductor bar system. And then we also have on here below, below here our optical positioning system. So the system that we have installed is uh, with a SICK uh, sensor that outputs a Profinet communication protocol. That just happens to be what we had in stock when we were building it this day. And so what we do is we take that Profinet communication that gives an absolute position of this vehicle, and it comes down inside this box. Inside here, we have a Nexus BB modem, which takes that data over, or that takes that Profinet signal and converts it into data over power. We inject it back into the conductor bar through the collectors, just through your regular power collectors, and we send it back to this box here where we have a Siemens PLC. And what we do is we have it programmed so that there's a minimum distance between these two, right? And, and that means that I am not gonna allow the operator, my, myself in this case, drive vehicle two into vehicle one by sending those command control. Once we reach that minimum distance, it sends that information back saying, hey, you're no longer allowed to drive. And to show that not only can we send command and control information, we also have an Ethernet camera up here streaming high definition video. Um, so I'll first demonstrate it with it in the, the, the small screen, and then I'll make it a large screen so you can see that. So this is that SIL3 uh, J radio line. So I'm going to go ahead and power up our radio here uh, and put it into tandem mode so you can see I'm driving both these vehicles. And then I can switch and just drive one, right? So now I'm gonna hold it down. I'm gonna attempt to drive vehicle two into vehicle one. And if you could read my screen, it would say backward limit reach, which means, hey, you tried to drive it into an illegal parameter, right? You tried to drive vehicle two into vehicle one and we don't allow that. Uh, and then we can just drive that back out. So again, that was Profinet communication streaming back to the PLC, PLC saying you're no longer allowed to drive. So we have that back and forth PLC communication while streaming the video at the same time. What I'll do now is I'll just switch it real quick so you can see the just driving it back and forth so you can see that video. Now I can't guarantee how it steam, streams through Teams, uh, but seeing it live, there's no lag, there's no performance uh, degradation by using this. You're able to get that full high definition video uh, as you're streaming from that mobile equipment. And then finally, I like to end with a hands-on, right? Being able to see what this actually looks like. So this modem is rated 120 to 480 VAC. So we have that incoming power coming in, and we wire that in. Now, it's important to note, there's no dip switch settings, no firmware, nothing like that. You just wire in that power, we automatically adapt, and then you wire in that ethernet signal, and it turns around and it injects that data over power signal back in to that, uh, back out into the conductor bar system. And you'll notice that this is the 24 to 48 volt DC modem. So just a little different connector on the bottom and it's a spring-loaded DIN rail mount. And you can see the size. I mean, it's about the size of my palm of my hand. I'm, I'm not a giant by any stretch of the imagination, uh, but that's what we have for the modems. And then for the filters, this is a 20-amp three-phase filter, and we use that to clean up the signal as we are bringing it. And then on the, on the mobile side, we clean that, that power signal back out before we send it to the equipment. And then this box isn't great to look at, but it's our terminating resistor. So on those conductor bar systems, where you need to have that terminating resistor to prevent a reflection, that's when we use that. And you use that on a conductor bar because you can have an unterminated length, right? So power travels along that entire conductor and you can just get some reflection. So a reel or a festoon or a cable chain, those are continuous. It always goes through that entire thing. So uh, with that, uh, I want to open it up to questions or things that we can help demonstrate to show you guys. Yeah, and please feel please feel free to unmute yourself if, if you do have a question. Yep, this is Tim again. Um, you had mentioned some sort of optical option to to verify position. Is that 
Is that the rail right behind you with the red light? Yep. So that, okay. that's going to be the optical so, positioning system right so, there. So that, what do you guys do to help per mitigate dusty factory conditions to uh, not lose resolution over time with that? Yeah, so with that, you can get a, a simple brush or something to, to mount on there to help clean it off. But for you know a regular dust environment, we don't run into a whole lot of issues. But if it starts getting a buildup, uh, you could just do a periodic wipe down of it. Or you could install a brush that would just run along there. Something that doesn't have a lot of pressure. Uh, that way you don't wear it off. But these are uh, uh, pretty wear resistant, even if you do have to run a brush over it. Yeah, and we mount it vertically also, right? So that you don't have that, that flat surface that the dust sits on. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Other questions? We did have one uh, sent in here. Uh, how can I verify what equipment I need for my application? Yeah, that, that's a great question. So if you have a specific application that you, you want to make sure which of these equipment, what's the right equipment uh, for that application, reach out to Rhino Toolhouse. We have some spec data sheets that has a few simple questions. We can step through that, and that ensures that we get you the right solution uh, for your application. Uh, any, any other, other questions? Any other questions? You could you could unmute yourself and, and uh, ask. All right. We're good. Am I on? All right. Well, thanks again, everybody, for joining us for this live demo. Uh, again, that's uh, Conductix Wampler uh, with collaborating with uh, Rhino Toolhouse here. If you have any questions about it, be sure to reach out to your local Rhino Toolhouse rep. Um, and if you don't know who that is, uh, certainly uh, email myself or Steve and we, we can get you in touch with the right person. Um, thanks again. And uh, finally, just want to announce the winner. So uh, Lynn Lamb, uh, you have been chosen as the winner of our, uh, our Arctic cooler. Really br uh, great looking cooler. Uh, Steve Vogt will get in touch with you uh, after the meeting to get your contact information and, and how to get the product to you so um thanks again and uh next time we're doing uh desuter um what is it the desuter ecosystem is the uh, the next uh webinar on may 20th i believe it is so uh join us for that one o'clock central time uh, if you're not familiar desuter is a fastening tool supplier uh, they provide a lot of uh, great solutions for any sort of torque and tightening uh, products so uh, thanks again and uh, we'll see you in about a month